Hello everybody, so I talked about this before and I'm going to just talk in general about policing in Cavan. Now as you know, there's obviously a crisis in Angara Shin and Connor. we know at the moment about the deputy commissioner that is retiring and there's literally not a guard in the country, a senior guard or a sergeant or superintendent that wants to be the deputy commissioner. And now that tells you all you need to know, like there's loads of superintendents and sergeants of course, but none of them want the wall and we have to ask why, first of all. Why is this? Why is that? Why is it happening? And as you know, Drew Harris, the Gallagher Commission that's here at the moment, the, the, the superintendents and the, the sergeants and stuff voted overwhelmingly 99%. Probably only about 10 voted for Drew Harris to stay. They wanted them gone and he's still there. So obviously, if somebody votes or something, usually in a democracy, the person that's there usually is got rid of and said, you know, sorry, your time's up, goodbye. You know, we're getting a new commissioner. But no, that, obviously this country is different. It, it, it doesn't, with democracy, there are plenty, every day of the week the t TDs and senators say about democracy and how important it is. And then the next day they change the tune, you know, when it suits them. But, you know, generally speaking, 99% means, you know, probably you shouldn't be there as well, in fairness. Um, but yeah, I, I want to talk about police in the cabin just first of all. So that, uh, just in the backdrop of that. So as you know, when the, when the, when the austerity hit in 2008, like Calvin had a, a lot of Gouda sessions with one in Cotel there that's probably open a few days a week and the same about Tobit used to be again a lot of permanent Gouda stations are closed they used to be permanent are closed down and just kind of lying idle and kind of maybe open once a week for passports maybe open twice a week could be open a day maybe some of them with only one or two Gouda there uh, and you know there's very there's only the Calvin Gouda station but Bayabo and Ballycona and stuff like that um, there's very other permanent Gouda stations based in the county they're all just kind of open a few days a week, or some of them are not even open at all. Like, for example, Bombay Gouda Station is a perfect example. Now, the, the Office of Public Works, which is responsible for maintaining and upgrading the Gouda Stations, right, uh, said, and even said to me, I, I questioned the Office of the Public Works, uh, I found the Office of the Public Work, and he said he would deliver it by the end of last year. Now, as we know, that didn't happen because I wouldn't be here saying about it, but just this is one example out of many things. That it's not being taken serious. If they really wanted to do it, they, they would have pushed for it. Now, they said it would take a good few bubbles because obviously the Gala station has been lying a long time. And we will make that has been lying there for years at this stage, just gathering dust. So obviously it needs a good bit of repairs. I understand that. I know that can't be done within a day. I understand that. But the fact that they've been on, this has been going on since about 2020. And they're still kind of arsing about. But that's at this stage, it's arsing about, to be totally honest that they're just saying, oh, we're going to open it this day. But like, like, I haven't heard anything since last year about it. They said that they're doing a review of it. But which Christmas is the review supposed to finish? You know, uh, and particularly, it has to be done. Like, I know it's a small guard station. There's probably only two or three guards probably based there. It's only it's not a big town, Bombay. But it's still, the matter of fact is, it'd be a huge increase. There like, could be a big... It'd be big, it'd basically be better for the West Calvin area too, just to have an extra Gouda station and an extra, maybe one or two Gouda to put in there, permanent there in, in Bombay. It, it'd be good for the West Calvin area, that's just one example they could do. And the same with Cotillo, they could open one or two of the Gouda stations permanently, fully 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Which I suggest too that they do Cotillo too in County Calvin, that they open that fully and have Gouda space there fully, because Cotillo is a big town you need to understand. So I presume, I, I, I would say they should have Cotillo open. Too. So they should open some of the guards, that would help and put a few extra guards. Obviously, they need to pay the guards fairly and obviously give them less hours and stuff like that. Because are some hours that the guards are walking in Calvin at the moment. I will admit it's a bit overwhelming. Some of them are walking extra time and stuff because there's no guards to take their place and stuff. And it's not fair, particularly when they have young families, some of them. It's, it's not fair with them. Um, and, you know, they're not getting as much as they probably should be for doing it. And at the end of the day, people always say this. People always say that they, you know they don't trust the guards and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, we have to be we have to be fair here. If something did happen, the first thing we anybody would do, any reasonable person, would ring on guard Shin O'Connor. The simple as that they would ring the guards if something happened. If your car was stolen, or something like that. People say I don't trust the guards. So if the first thing they would do is something happened on guard Shin O'Connor. So we have to be fair. The only for the guards, the only guard on the street. There won't be any at the moment. This country is nearly lawlessness at the moment. In some in some parts of the country, but only for the only guard on the street and some guard and things that we've been total lawlessness. To be crime be up, it is gone through the roof. But people be more than each other on the street if there wasn't a guards and law and some kind of law in this country. But take we do have that still, and uh, we have some guards even though the country is going to lawlessness very quickly. But yeah, just even say I talked about this. There was an incident there 
in October the 22nd in the town. I will talk about this. I don't have much details. I know a good few people ask me about it, just to say. And to be totally honest, I've, I've looked into it and I've asked questions and stuff. And there's a lot of, at the time, there was a lot of rumours and stuff like that. So there was a serious assault. But apart from that, we don't really know much more. And I might as well be honest, even after quizzing different things. And even the guard of press office will not really give any more details apart from that. They said they're looking for CCTV footage and stuff like that. But my point is, the Cavan town there, particularly in being the main town in the county, and obviously people out on a Saturday night, more of the weekend there should be more of a guard of presence. Like on the beat, like on the street, on the beat, not sitting in the guard's barracks. That's not helping anybody. Uh, obviously there should be a guard at the desk, obviously, at, any, at all times, basically, if any member of the public wants any, anything from a guard of Sri O'Connor, there should be a member of the, of the force on the desk. Um, now I know a few people did say that the wedding the Calvin Gowder station there wasn't anybody on the desk, uh, in a few times and that shouldn't be the case. To be told, it should be one always on the desk for a member of the public. A member of the public needs assistance. They shouldn't have to wait for a guard to come out. Um, now obviously, it, it, as I say, Saturday and Sunday nights it's probably the main time people be in the town. But even on, in even the week, even weekdays and stuff like that, there should be always a presence in the town. Regardless, one or two gals just either walking up the town or walking down the streets. Just being physically present, like it is a, a good to see for members of the public, even shop owners and stuff, that there is a physical presence. You can see the gals walking around, just being in the area, just to make to say the people, you know, were here, were in the area. You know, it's just, it's about that security. It brings security, it brings peace of mind when you know, you know, there's a tally in the area. And the same would even just going up in the squad car, just looking around, just making sure everything's fine. But, uh, and I and will say this to the gals, in the last few months to have, kind of improved on it. I will say that since, uh, since October, they seem to have improved a lot because all the times I'm in the town now, I, I do see a member of a girl in the corner, which is good to see. You always want to see at least one. There should be always at least one or two just around the town, the main town, uh, or out by August, where August used to be a little or things. Like there should be always just kind of patrolling around the town. There should be always basically a squad car or two cops on the beat, basically, just around the town specifically, uh, just, to be, just to be seen, I suppose. Uh, because it, I have to say it is important, particularly for for elderly people, mem uh, elderly people, members of the public, even for members of the public in general, particularly for elderly people, that you know that there is police there to look after. There's on Gardner Street in the corner there to look after the town, and to look after them, make sure they won't be robbed or anything. God forbid. But you know it's important. It's important. But going back to the incident, the twenty second, uh, of October. Uh, now I'm I'm sure we all agree the guard can't be every the can't be everywhere. The can't be standing over everything every day of the week. I understand that they, we haven't got the numbers simply to be everywhere. The girls can't be simply every part of the county. I will understand that. It's a big county. There's a lot to do. They have a lot of ground to cover and uh, very few cops to do it. I understand that. We can't be disingenuous and say, you know, they should be everywhere. But, you know, at least try. Again, at the moment, there's not enough effort and morale, I suppose, to be put in. But again, a good lot of it has to do with the higher ups in the girls in the column, the way it's being governed. Basically, it's from the top down, basically. So, obviously, the people in the garage have very little faith in the commissioner, in the establishment, particularly the Department of Justice, you see Helen McAtee at the moment. They have very little trust in the higher-ups. And they're the people that we need to kind of change or try and get a new strategy going. Because at the moment, it's working to a certain degree. In some areas, it's working. In some areas, it isn't working. But we see a Dublin city, it, nobody would walk around there at night or even during the day. People are terrified of their life. Uh, and we simply, this is the point to what to make, we simply cannot let Cavan or County Town or even towns in Cavan get like Dublin City or things that we have to do our best. And by doing that too, we're looking after children, we're looking after elderly, we're looking after members of the public. And it is the responsibility, and I always say this straight, it is the responsibility of every, every citizen in the county, particularly if you pay your taxes and stuff like that, you're paying you're paying the state for to look after basically the county and stuff like that to look after the people of the county and it's important that we use our voice you know it's not up to us or only councillors or TDs to say you know this that and you know we have to be as individuals to take collective responsibility as a people of whichever town we're from say for Cavan or for Bertolbert or Tipperary or Killeshant or whatever you know you have to take collective responsibility as a community to say you know this is not adequate policing that we deserve to feel safe in our county, in our homes, in our streets, in our villages, in our towns, in our shops, in our pubs, regardless of what it is. And it isn't adequate, and it isn't good enough. There can always be more done, and that's the point I'm making. But you always have to speak up and be heard. Thank you.